Hey guys, Buffer Game Bad today, bringing our video, and today we're gonna go over all of the weapons in the closed beta version of World War III here on PC. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna be the final list of weapons when the game eventually does release. This does seem to be very similar to the weapon list we had in early access. However, a lot of these weapons were left out of the early access or the closed alpha last month. So, we'll go ahead and run through all the weapons here and take a look at some of the customization. Although, nothing's really unlocked because you do need to level things up now as they're kind of implementing this as if it were a release, however, just in a closed beta version. So, we'll start off, we'll go into the assault rifles. So, if I switch over to the assault rifles, the first weapon here is the MSBSK. This is a Polish assault rifle firing 5.56 by 45 NATO. We can look at some of the, uh, some of the different attachments for this. If we go ahead and customize, you can see it's going to come... Anything here, you can have different uh, optics. You have your your one times, like your holographics, different sights like that. You have different forms of iron sights, which really you really wouldn't want unless you're putting into something like canted mounted. Then you have your medium range optics. You have the three times, four times. You have things like L cans, things like that for longer range engagements. Five times, all the way up to five times here. And then you have special, which is going to be kind of the infrared type optics here for thermal vision that you can see that will unlock later so you can uh, customize everything we'll get into more of that here as we go through however let's go back and continue with the weapons so for assault as we said we have the msbs k in 556 by 45 nato next up here at level 10 you're going to unlock the g36 now it says this is just the base g36 however it does look more like a g36 k a4 or curs for short um just the more compact version of the G36 assault rifle. So it does appear to be a G36K A4. You have the quad Picatinny rail there on the handguard, as well as the top Picatinny there on the carrying handle. And you can see the stock changes to the weapon as well. So it's a G36 at level 10. Then we have the barrel 762. This is essentially an AK uh, M series platform weapon produced out of Poland. Now this is gonna be firing 7.62 by 39 millimeters, same as the Russian AKM. And you can see here, it does have the customized handguard, top uh, Picatinny rail, dust cover, customized stock, everything like that. And it is in fact a stamped receiver for this weapon. So that's the the barrel, barrel 7.62. I'm definitely butchering. I'm not sure how the pronunciation of this, but essentially this is your AKM platform weapon in 7.62 by 39 millimeter. Moving on, we have the M416 or the HK416. Again, this is the assault, primary assault rifle um, used in the Bin Laden raid, 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO. This is essentially the improved version of the M4 M16 platform developed by HK uh, to kind of combat the short barrel troubles that the United States military was having with the M4s for compact. Uh, versions of the m4 having firing issues so the m416 really has that same platform ergonomics as the m4 um, for the improved versions like the salt mods and obviously we can customize it very heavily in this game as well so that's our h and k416 or our m416 then we can go ahead and just keep going down we have the ak-15 so interesting choice here the you have the barrel 7.62 or the AKM, and then you have the AK-15 out of Russia. Now, the model here is actually an AK-12. You can see the magazine is not curved like a 7.62 mag would be. Um, so they do, unfortunately, have the wrong magazine option there, it looks like. That's a 5.45 mag, but however, it is firing 7.62 by 39 millimeters. So this is supposed to be the AK-15, and it does look to be um, the prototype version of the weapon still. So... Um, I'd have to go back and double check, but it doesn't really look to be the production model of the AK-15, AK-12 platform, but very similar. Again, the, the two models aesthetically looked pretty close to the same, more internal differences, but this appears to be more of the uh, early 2012-2013 prototype version of the AK-12-15 platform. But again, here in game, really nice looking. Again, you can customize this, different handguards, everything like that, to make it look probably more on par with the production version of the AK-15, AK-12, and this one, 472 by 39 being that AK-15. Next up, we have the M4 MWS. So again, here's just the standard M4, 556 by 45 millimeter NATO at level 36. And then here at level 43, we have the MSBS Bullpup version. So the same weapon as what we have for the starter weapon here being the MSBS K. However, we have the Bullpup variant, again, out of Poland, 
This, is, this one, however, instead of 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO is going to be firing 300 blackout. So not only is it bullpup, it's more compact. Um, you have the 300 blackout caliber here, which distinguishes it from its um, K counterpart. So the range is going to be decreased here. Damage will be up, rate of fire a little bit lower. However, you're firing that 300 blackout round, which is comparable to the 762 by 39 that the uh, AKM and the AK-15 are firing. So really nice looking weapon here. Good bullpup option. I believe this is the only bullpup in the game. Moving down, then we have the Israeli Alpha AK. So this is, again, a 7.62 by 39 millimeter weapon. We have three assault rifles firing 7.62 by 39 millimeter. And again, this is out of Israel, just essentially a modernized, they modernized take on the AKM platform as well. However, it does appear to have a 5.45 magazine on this, unfortunately. But again, small details, still a very aesthetically pleasing weapon. So that's at level 51. Moving on to the battle rifles, we have the HK-417, which is the counterpart to the 416. However, this one is chambered in 762 by 51 millimeter NATO. This is a battle rifle, obviously, as it is in the category, so I'm glad they listed that correctly. And this is fully automatic with the ability to switch to select fire to single fire. Then we have the SCAR H or the Mark 17. This firing 762 by 51 millimeter NATO as well. And again, it looks to be a 20 round magazine here. Um, we can take a look at some of the customizations here after we get through the rest of the weapons. However, this one staple um, classic fire in here. It looks really pleasing. I like the black. You can obviously change it to a tan with the different uh, customization options on this. But you can see very nice looking weapon, the SCAR H. Moving on to LMGs, we have the UKM, which is the uh, Polish variant of the PKM just reconfigured it to be chambered in 762 by 51 millimeter NATO. Then we have the PKP Pechenegg bullpup. So this is a bullpup variant of the PKP Pechenegg. This is kind of an aftermarket uh, conversion kit version. It's not actually produced from uh, Kalashnikov Concern. However, they did a really good job replicating this in the game and this was in the early access as well. And that firing 762 by 54 millimeter R. Next up, we have the HK MG5. And again, very nice looking weapon. This is 7.62 by 51 millimeter, just like the UKM. And uh, a very nice looking weapon. This is the, uh, the big brother of the German MG4, firing 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO. Then we have the SA80, which this appears to be um, an L85. A2. I don't want to say it's an A3 just yet, but the handguard, however, does look very much more modernized. But it does appear to be more so of an A2 version of the SA80 the L85. And again, it comes here with you have that drum mag of the 556 by 45 bipod. You have that nice looking handguard on here as well. Um, and a lot of the customization options, you can probably configure this to be more so in line, even that it is now with an A3 variant. So that's the SA80. Moving on to sniper rifles here, we have the G29 out of Germany. And then we also have the Russian. This appears to be, it's called the, the I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, the Tokenost. However, this does appear to be the uh, T5000, I believe, is what this is supposed to be. Firing 762 by 51 millimeter NATO here, and in real life it can be converted to just about any caliber as well. And then we have the chi -Tech M200 firing that custom chi tech 408 millimeter so this thing's a big boy um this is unlocked at level 50 that would be a lot of fun to get my hands on once we get there moving on to shotguns we have the mcs or the uh as it's called the i believe it's the remington 107 maybe i'm mistaken there i can't remember off the top of my head but the mcs again really uh prominent shotgun here pretty much featured in every single game 12 gauge shotgun then we have the vepper 12 this is, again, a 12-gauge shotgun. We can have different ammo conversions for all these as well. Um, interesting, they went with the, with the Vepper 12 instead of the Saiga. However, they are very similar weapons um, at the end of the day anyway. So the Vepper 12 there is a shotgun. Moving on to sidearms, we have the Glock 17 here at level 1, which you start with. Level 5, we have the the Ragun or the Ragun. This, again, is 9x19 Parabellum, same as the uh, Glock 17. Then we have the Russian, uh, the Lebedev, this is 9x18 Makarov. Then you have the DMG 9mm, which is 9x18, and this appears to be 
a fully automatic pistol with a rate of fire being increased. So this is a full auto pistol um, that you'll be unlocking at level 46. Very interesting looking weapon. Moving on to specials, we have the RPG-7 as well as the PPZR. And then for SMGs, we have the we have the PP-19 Vitiez, which is the replacement for the PP-19 Bison out of Russia. And then we have the Polish, uh, not even going to pronounce this. Again, this looks similar to, um, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but again, a very uh, interesting looking weapon firing 9x18 Makarov out of Polish. And then we have the Sig M PX firing that 40 Smith & Weston. So this is the submachine gun variant of the Sig Sauer MCX. This one chambered in 40, 40 Smith & Weston would be a lot of fun to get our hands on as well. Now let's go to customization really quick here. We'll go ahead and take a look at the SCAR if it lets me open this. Otherwise, we'll look at the 417, which I actually have unlocked. So I don't think it'll let me look at that one since I don't have it. But look, we can look at the 417 here. And if we look at the different customization options, obviously for iron sights, you have all these different iron sights that you can go ahead and choose from. If we go ahead and look at the uh, kilometers and hollows, you have a bunch of different variations here. You have different EOTechs, different red dots, different aim points, things like that. You can see there's a whole plethora of options here to go ahead and choose from. And I think some of these ones will also have uh, thermal optics sights for them as well um, as these holographics. And then we have high magnifications here because this is a battle rifle, it's gonna have high magnification. Obviously we have six times all the way up to what looks like eight times optics here that you can put on this and configure it more so as a DMR version of the battle rifle, which is really nice. You can throw a bipod on there. Iron sights we looked at, medium magnification up to five, five times. You also have some of these optics that have lasers built in with them as well. And then special optics which we discussed being the thermal optics uh, in six times, eight times, and four times. So pretty nice looking uh, optics there on the weapon. For our secondary sights, again, this is where you can candid mount your optics. So you can have different sights here like this aim op or the aim point, different options here that you'll be able to unlock as you progress through. However, really unfortunate that you gotta get all the way to like level 32, 7, 32, 17 to unlock some of these. So it's definitely gonna be a grind. You do get some iron sight candidate mounts here um, as you move on up through the ranks as well, which is better than nothing if you're gonna run a high powered optic. Underbarrel attachments, you have a bunch of different grips. So you can see here you have the monster grip, classic vertical foregrip, you have the bipod, you have a grip, big for the monster grip, the Juno grip, you have different angled Ar Zeneco RK2 grips, which you would see primarily on Russian weapons, mainly the PKP bullpup Pechenegg version. And you can see we have a grip pod here, but primarily we see that with Scar H. And you can see a bunch of these different ones, the potato grip as well, unlocked there at the very end. So different magazine styles. You can see here, none of these are going to increase your magazine ammo capacity. I don't believe they're all gonna be 20 rounders here and you do have 10 rounders for better mobility. And then for secondary ammo, you can see you'll unlock different things like full metal jacket, armor piercing, and you have HP rounds here as well. So a bunch of different uh, attachments for ammunition, which will, which will help pre penetrate different armor plates. Then on the side mounts, you have things like lights, PEC 15s, you can see here it can be mounted as well. Um, really nice looking on this weapon. Different flashlights, laser light toggles, which would be very helpful in close quarter situations, especially with the PEC 15, just for hip fire accuracy. Uh, if we look at the barrel options, you have different barrel options here. We have the base, you have longer barrel, and then you have a compact version for the more, mainly like this would turn it into the M4. 17 of the HK 417 Assaulter version with that short barrel option as well. And then you can do different things like the DMR version, things like that. So you can do a bunch of different conversions here. And then muzzle options, you have default muzzles all the way up to different types of suppressors here as well. And again, all these attachments are, you have a lot of unique attachments per different weapons. So just remember that nothing is copy and paste for the weapons. And here you can see the default version of the E417 that you get when you unlock it for the generic class. So pretty decked out 417 is a lot of fun to use. You can customize your armor plates, things like this. So we have what at base is just Kevlar. Then we have chromatic armor plates, which is actually going to, uh, this is level three. So this is gonna offer um, better protection. However, at the cost of mobility, and then you have uh, head 
plates as well. So you start with titanium, or you start with Kevlar, and then you get titanium there as well. So you can see your protection level is going to go up. However, it will slow you down. You have different primary kits here, like med, med pack, equipment pack, ammo pack, and then you also have armor packs to replenish some armor. As well as different grenades here. You have frags, anti-tank mines, claymores, C4 IED, anti-tank grenades. You have Semtex and RGO Russian grenades, or impact grenades that'll blow up on impact. And then different backpacks here. You can see, if we go ahead, this would be the backpack what you carry for your uh, in-game swap system. So you can have different optics that you'll carry that you can swap to. So think of Battlefield just like the Weapons Plus. However, here you choose what's in your backpack and you can swap to those attachments on the fly. So here I have this, um, this kilometer basically this one times optic that I can throw on there as well. Secondary sights, you have an aim point, throw that on there, really nice looking. Under barrels, I don't have anything yet, but you can see here you have things like the uh, underslung shoddy and grenade launcher, which can be equipped. And then for the muzzle, we have different suppressors here as well, which can go in the backpack, which are really nice looking. We have a hex muzzle there too, which is really nice. And then gadgets, you can also carry these in your backpack. And again, switch to these on the fly. So different grenades, as well as a mini drone there as well. So that's the customization. Obviously, you have the different pistols. You can customize them as well. We already went through the pistols. So those are all the weapons for World War, World War III. You also have a bunch of different character customization as well. But you can see here, as you progress through and unlock, you'll unlock these default classes, which come with the weapons pre-configured with some attachments. So like the Assaulter has the MSBSK. Any tank has the PP-19 Vitiez. Support, you start with the UKM, and then for the Marksman here, as we showed off, the M417. And then as you go through, you'll unlock these different uh, decked out loadouts as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting up here to the Heavy Assault so I can get the AKM, as well as you go things like Anti-Air, Suppression, you get the MG5, the Siege, you get the SCAR-H and the M MPX, which would be a lot of fun to use as well. That SCAR-H looks really, really nice. Then you get the puncture and the uh, glass cannon. Again, this is a Alpha AK with a Vepper 12. So a lot of fun here. It looks like it's going to be a blast, all the weapons. You also have character customization, which we'll go through at a different time. But those are all the weapons for World War III closed beta. Let me know what you guys think down below. Till next time, Buffner Gaming, out.